Chairman appeals the Queen on the application of Chester and the gift against the Lord President of the Council and another. Lord Mans uh, will explain the judgment of the court. United Kingdom law currently contains a general prohibition on voting by prisoners. In a series of cases involving various European countries, including the Grand Chamber decisions of Hearst No. 2 against the United Kingdom and Scopola against Italy, the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg has decided that a blanket prohibition of this nature is an indiscriminate restriction on a vitally important right and as such incompatible with the duty to hold free and fair elections, which rests on all members of the Council of Europe under Article 3 of Protocol No. 1 of the European Convention on Human Rights. Article 3 is incorporated into domestic law by the Human Rights Act 1998, and the general incompatibility of United Kingdom law with Article 3 was recognised already in 2007 in the Scottish case of Smith against Scott, where a declaration of incompatibility was made at the instance of a prisoner sentenced to five years for being concerned in the supply of controlled drugs. The present two applicants, Peter Chester and George McGeorg, claim against the relevant government ministers that their rights are being infringed by the UK's general prohibition on voting by prisoners. Both these appellants are prisoners serving sentences of life imprisonment imposed for murder combined in the case of McGeorg with a later sentence of seven and a half years for violent escape from lawful custody. Chester's claim relates to voting in UK and European parliamentary elections. He relies on Article 3 of Protocol No. 1 and on the European Community or now European Union law. McGeorg's claim related below to Scottish parliamentary and local elections, but by the Supreme Court's permission he now also uh, claims in relation to European parliamentary elections. He relies solely on EU law. Both claims were dismissed by the courts below. The issues now before the Supreme Court are, first, whether it should apply the principles established in the European Court of Human Rights case law, second, if so, whether the current UK ban on voting is incompatible with Chester's rights under Article 3, and the Supreme Court should make a declaration, a further declaration of incompatibility under the Human Rights Act. Three, whether EU law recognises an individual right to vote in terms paralleling or greater than that arising under Article 3, on which um, Chester and McGeorg can rely upon as EU citizens claiming to vote in their own countries. And four, what consequences should follow if EU law were to recognise an individual right to vote of this nature? The Supreme Court unanimously dismisses both appeals. Lord Mance gives the lead judgment. Lady Hale, Lord Clark and Lord Sumption give additional judgments. In summary, the Court considers that it should apply the principles established by the European Court of Human Rights in its case law under the Human Rights Act, but it declines to make any further declaration of incompatibility. As to EU law, this does not provide an individual right to vote paralleling that recognised by the European Court of Human Rights, and the resolution of these appeals does not require a reference to the European Court of Justice in Luxembourg. In greater detail, the Court's reasons are, as regards the claim under Article 3 of Protocol No. 1 of the Convention on Human Rights, the Human Rights Act requires the Supreme Court to take into account decisions of the European Court of Human Rights, not necessarily to follow them. This enables the national courts to engage in a constructive dialogue with the European Court of Human Rights. However, the Grand Chamber of the European Court of Human Rights has now twice held that the prohibition on prisoner voting in the UK is incompatible with Article 3 of Protocol 1. In these circumstances, it would have to involve some truly fundamental principle of United Kingdom law or the most egregious oversight or misunderstanding before the Supreme Court could appropriately refuse to follow the Strasbourg decisions. That is not the case here. It is therefore right to apply the European Court of Human Rights case law. Accepting, accepting that according to that case law, Chester was a victim for the purposes of the Human Rights Act and the Convention, and entitled as such to bring a claim against the respondents, that does not necessarily entitle him to any particular remedy. A declaration of incompatibility is a discretionary remedy. 
in circumstances where a declaration of incompatibility has already been made in Smith against Scott, and the matter is currently under review in Parliament, there is no point in making a further declaration of incompatibility. Further, the Uni European Court of Human Rights case law indicates that Chester, as a serving life prisoner, would not himself benefit from any amendments to United Kingdom law necessary to remedy its present incompatibility with Article 3 of Protocol No. 1. Whilst his tariff period has expired, he remains in custody because this continues to be necessary for the protection of the public. As to both appellants' claims under EU law, the provisions on voting contained in the applicable European treaties focus on the core concerns of ensuring equal treatment between EU citizens residing in member states other than that of their nationality, and so safeguarding free freedom of movement within the EU. Eligibility to vote in member states is basically a matter for national legislators. The Court of Justice of the European Union has scrutinized national eligibility criteria for conformity with the EU legal principle of non-discrimination in a context where Netherlands law extended the right to vote of its nationals to some, but not all, non-EU states. But there is no equivalent link with EU law in the present cases. The Supreme Court has also considered the consequences if, contrary to its view, EU law were to be regarded as conferring an individual right to vote on which McGeorg and Chester could rely. On that hypothesis, it expresses these conclusions. First, the EU legal of principle of non-discrimination would still not be engaged. Convicted prisoners serving their sentence are not in a comparable position to persons not in prison. Second, the whole prohibition on prisoner voting could not simply have been disapplied and the relevant domestic legislation could not have been, been interpreted compatibly with EU law. Nor could the Supreme Court itself have devised a scheme compatible with EU law that would be and is a matter for the United Kingdom Parliament. Third, neither of the appellants could have had any arguable claim for damages. Fourth, the only relief that might have been appropriate would have been a declaration that the UK's prohibition on prisoner voting in European parliamentary and municipal elections was inconsistent with EU law, although even that would not have appeared appropriate in the circumstances of the instant cases. So far as the case turns on EU law, the Court concludes that the relevant legal principles are clear so that no reference to the Court of Justice in Luxembourg is required. For all these reasons, both appeals are dismissed. Thank you. The court is now adjourned.